making in their trades. What specific actions do you believe the school board can take to guarantee that our students are prepared to compete in a global marketplace, and what does a quality education mean to you? Well, the quality education is, to me, is already answered in that first statement. Today's high school graduates face a globally competitive environment. They have to be able to compete with that environment. We're talking about students that come from Pakistan, India, go to medical schools, see what, what the students are today competing with. We have to compete internationally. I've noticed where Hartford is taking a look at you know, the classroom 20 years from now, 10 years from now. I haven't seen our school board do that yet. Are we looking ahead? Are we offering a lot of virtual education? We have students that I feel would thrive in virtual education environments. Let them, they can leave the classroom, and that would help free up time and space for other students but with teachers. Those uh, virtual classrooms can be monitored and allows the students to move at their own pace, and I am convinced that those students that are high achievers will move along even rap more rapidly than they do now. That, I think, again, will then allow the time and some resources to take care of other students because I have a concern we're not taking care of the other end of the students, are the students that are failing. Are we doing a good job of taking care of them? Are we checking out why we have failure rates? And are we fixing them? We, are we also doing and providing a technical education for students? Not every student is bound for college. Take a look at the, at the wages that are being paid for mechanics. An auto mechanic makes a darn good living, and those are the areas we have to address. Thank you. Thank you. Candy Manor. Well, this morning about 4 o'clock, uh, we got up and we took our daughter to the airport. She's a college student, and she is living in New Zealand for the next seven months. Um, doing an internship and doing college study there. This is the reality for kids now. 50 to 75 percent will be involved in some international study post high school. So what do we do to assist students, whether they're college bound or other? Certainly from a college bound perspective, we've enhanced the rigor of what we're offering. We have an ACT initiative now that will uh, be in place. It aligns our core courses with what students need to know to be successful on the ACT exam. And those courses are offered to all children, whether they are honor student or a special needs student. Each student has the potential for high success. From a technical education, we offer our nursing assistant class at the high school in a lab on site. Nursing assistant is a prerequisite for many health sciences careers and a position students, uh, they can explore a career and they can transition more easily into a career post high school. From a virtual perspective, uh, I did want to let you know, Doug, that, that we offered 10 virtual classes this last semester. By 2013, each student will be required to complete one virtual class in our school district so that they are well prepared when they move to post-secondary, where we know virtual is going to be emphasized. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, Doug Ziegler? The word <coughs> guarantee bothers me because I don't think there's any way the school board can guarantee that children or young people that graduate from our, our high school uh, will succeed in the world competition. I think motivation uh, is a much more appropriate word to uh, describe the motivation on the part of the individual student as distinguished from the school board. I think that parents can obviously do a lot to influence that, but again, it comes down to the individual. How anxious are they to go out and prove themselves in being competitive with a world society? I know when I was a director of uh, Johnson Controls, we were able to hire uh, Indian, I mean the country of India uh, people, for half the salary that uh, they were paying uh, as a current salary at uh, CCI. And so I think that 
uh, you have very, very strong competition around the world. And I think that, uh, I don't know whether it starts over there or whether it starts with the individual, but I believe personally that the motivation of the individual is far more important than what the school board can contribute to being competitive in the world. Obviously, we've got to have current courses, etc. But that's about it. Thank you, Steve. Well, I, I agree, Doug. Uh, we can't guarantee that. That's not a function of the board. That's not even not one of our. It is one of our. Um, we are overseeing that, but we can prepare the kids. And as a builder, I'll relate this question to that. The most important thing in a building is the foundation. Without that, we uh, the, the buildings would 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 crumble. You know, the, the recent earthquakes in Haiti. The, the tremendous devastation there was because of the foundations weren't solid. They weren't built to withstand pressures of an earthquake. Um, if the foundation is strong, the student can uh, can go anywhere. I believe that we need to, to stress strong core classes and programs. And then the students can succeed wherever they choose. Some may choose uh, the college route, some may choose uh, getting into the workforce, starting their own business. But building the strong foundation starts with those core principal classes. Um, have high expectations for the kids. Um, build a strong foundation of the core classes, and the kids will succeed. Thank you. Randy? Um, I think in the same vein, I mean, put it a little differently. I think the most important thing we can do uh, as parents, as teachers, as board members, is to inspire our kids to become lifelong learners. Um, and in, <clears throat> I look at my own example. Um, I work in, in an industry and all I deal with all day is computers. I do spreadsheets and word processing and draw, you know, CAD drawings. I've never had a computer class in my life. I learned myself. And I think as my wife went through nursing school, as my kids went through high school, they found out pretty quickly that the teacher cannot impart knowledge to you. You have to go out and grab it. You have to be a learner. And uh, so I think that's one of the most important things. Uh, the worldwide web of information is out there. All you need to do is go find it. Uh, and then our teachers need to inspire students as well. Uh, it's something you know parents always try to do. Sometimes a teacher can, can reach a student, uh, put them on a path. Uh, I remember back my uh, drafting teacher in high school is the one who set me on my career path. Uh, and then I think involving community uh, employers, business leaders, to, to you know, bring them into the classroom more often, to you know, show what is out there, show relevance of what you're learning to what you're going to be facing in the job market. I think there's always a, a disconnect that, you know, you think you got to go to a school for 12, 14, 16 years. Um, and then also the ex extracurricular activities. I Thank think you. the Challenger community do, to volunteer and help provide those, those uh, things. Thank you. Uh, Lynn Karazi, same question. The school district is a business, and our finished product is a child who's ready to make a transition whether that transition is from an elementary school to a middle, a middle to a high, or a high to another university or their first job. Our job is to make sure that those students are ready or to give them every opportunity to be ready. You're right, we can't guarantee the performance of every single child, but we can certainly create a learning environment that does help them succeed. And it really starts at the elementary level by making sure that we've got enough resources and the type of curriculum that is gonna stimulate that interest in learning. You can't just hope that a kid wants to learn. My God, my, I mentioned my, my high school senior already. Yeah, does she like to open up her book every day? And she's a college bound kid. We gotta push her. The school is creating all kinds of opportunity for her to succeed in that. I've talked about a lot of the programs that the educational system in West Bend has already put together. Project Lead, Lead the Way, the Culinary Arts Program. Kathy mentioned a certified nursing, you know, um, program. Those are all things that we've done to kind of prepare kids to give them an opportunity to succeed <coughs> should they choose to accept it. At the middle school level, we've implemented the AVID program. AVID stands for 
advancement via individual determinationism. And it's for kids who test well, but don't perform well in the classroom. It's making sure that we've got the resources to give them the additional attention so that they can succeed. It's making sure that our classrooms are prepared. Um, last fall, Dr. Hertridge, or last year, Dr. Hertridge and Joe Carlson took a trip to China. They saw the, the classroom of the future. As a result of that, the Educational Foundation, of which I'm part of, pioneered a, a process to get many laptops into, into kids' hands. Every, just about every classroom now has a smart board and an Elmo. That these are things that bring a new excitement into the teacher, offer learnings in different ways that weren't before.